Ever wondered what's really behind Venice's enchanting canals and ancient buildings? It's not just pretty facades and gondolas. Beneath the beauty lies a hidden story of jaw-dropping engineering and mind-boggling innovation. How has the city managed to stay afloat for over a thousand years, even as sea levels rise and the ground beneath it sinks? Let's dive deep into Venice's history and discover the secrets that keep it standing today. Over a thousand years ago, in a vast watery stretch on Italy's Adriatic coast, Venice was born. Back then, it wasn't the glamorous city we know today. In fact, it was a little more than a soggy refuge. Picture this, the Western Roman Empire has just fallen, chaos and conflict are everywhere, and people are scrambling to escape invaders like the Lombards, who arrived in northern Italy around 568 AD. In their desperation, many made their way to this swampy region, the Venetian Lagoon. It wasn't an easy place to live, far from it. These early Venetians found themselves stuck on tiny islands surrounded by water with barely any resources. Yet, they saw opportunity in this mess. They had to think on their feet, getting creative to survive in a place where everything seemed to be working against them. The lagoon, however, offered a hidden advantage. It acted like a natural moat, providing protection from invaders and a strategic control point over key trade routes. With this strategic edge, the scattered islands began to connect, forming a cohesive settlement. Venice began to emerge as an independent entity, free from the mainland's control, a small but mighty force on its way to becoming a major player in Mediterranean trade. Building a city in Venice's watery, unstable environment was a monumental challenge. Imagine trying to build on a surface that's as unpredictable as a bowl of jelly. The ground was soft, shifting, and layered like a geological lasagna. So, how did they pull it off? Initially, the Venetians thought about using marble stones for their foundations. But they quickly scrapped the idea when they realized they didn't have enough of it. Then they had a light bulb moment. Why not use wood? And not just any wood, water resistant alder wood, which was abundant in northern Italy. So they began driving wooden poles deep into the muddy lagoon bed. Over 1.5 million wooden poles, each about 20 to 30 centimeters wide and about 3 to 4 meters long, were hammered down until they reached a solid clay layer called Caranto. These poles, submerged in oxygen-poor water, didn't decay as you might expect. Instead, they hardened over time, becoming as tough as stone. This wooden skeleton formed a rock-solid foundation, allowing Venice to grow and thrive. With the wooden foundation set, Venice's next challenge was constructing the buildings themselves. They started with wood, but after a few too many fires, they decided to switch to brick. The buildings were kept lightweight, no more than three stories high, and the Venetians used lime mortar instead of cement. Why? Because lime mortar was flexible enough to adjust as the ground shifted beneath the city. Smart move, right? Even the walls were built with flexibility in mind. The inner walls were arranged in a crisscross pattern, much like a trellis, to make them bend and flex rather than crack. Meanwhile, the outer walls, adorned with large windows and intricate stonework, were anchored with iron rods to keep them from toppling over. Bit by bit, these ingenious building techniques helped Venice rise from the waters. Venice didn't grow like most cities. Instead of expanding outwards, it spread across a series of islands, with canals serving as main roads. These canals became the arteries of the city, moving people and goods quickly and efficiently. But maintaining them wasn't a simple task. Silt kept piling up, threatening to clog the waterways. The Venetians took action by regularly dredging the canals to keep them deep enough for boat traffic. They even held a competition to design the first bridge to connect key areas like Rialto, the city's financial hub. The winner was a basic floating bridge, which eventually evolved into a more permanent wooden structure. When that wooden bridge finally met its demise, they built a sturdier stone bridge, supported by 12,000 wooden piles and 10,000 tons of stone. And guess what? That stone bridge still stands today, a testament to Venetian resilience. 
Venice's architecture is like a grand showcase of influences from around the world. It started with a strong Byzantine flavor, particularly visible in the stunning St. Mark's Basilica. Built between the 9th and 11th centuries, with its five magnificent domes and shimmering mosaics, it's a masterpiece of Byzantine art. The exterior is adorned with marble columns and elaborate carvings, blending Eastern and Western styles beautifully. As Venice's wealth grew during the Middle Ages, the city's architecture began to evolve. The Gothic style took over, bringing pointed arches, flying buttresses, and an almost fairy tale like appearance to the city's skyline. The Doge's Palace is the perfect example of Venetian Gothic. Look closely, and you'll see the unique blend of Eastern influences and local ingenuity. But the story didn't stop there. As the centuries rolled on, Venetian architecture continued to change, adapting to new styles and ideas. The Baroque period introduced more dramatic theatrical designs, while the 19th and 20th centuries saw buildings like the Palazzo dei Congressi and Museo Correr blend classical and modern elements, creating a unique architectural dialogue between the past and the present. Living surrounded by seawater might sound romantic, but the reality was far from it. Fresh water was a constant concern for Venice. With no rivers or springs, the Venetians had to bring in water from the mainland by boat. But as the population grew, this method became unsustainable. So they got creative. They turned the city itself into a giant rainwater collector. They built big open squares, lined them with waterproof clay, and filled them with layers of sand and stone. The surface was tiled to direct rainwater toward a central well in each square. Even building roofs were equipped with gutters to funnel rain into these squares. Over 600 wells were filled this way, providing the city with a much needed fresh water. Fresh water wasn't the only problem. Waste management was another big headache. At first, people simply tossed their garbage, including, yes, urine and feces, gross, out their windows. Can you imagine the smell? If you lived near a canal, at least some of it got carried away by the water. But those further inland weren't so lucky. The solution? Underground tunnels that used the tides to flush waste away. During low tide, waste would settle at the bottom of these tunnels. When the tides rose, seawater would rush in, washing the waste into the canals. The natural ebb and flow of the tides combined with the salt water kept the canals relatively clean. Ingenious, right? Venice faces a constant battle against flooding, known locally as aqua alta, caused by high tides, strong winds, and even human activities like groundwater extraction. To combat this, the Venetians developed a series of innovative solutions, from raised walkways and waterproof barriers to the ambitious Mose Project, M-O-S-E, a series of enormous floodgates designed to close off the lagoon during exceptionally high tides. Venice is a city that has literally risen from the depths, built by people who refuse to give up in the face of daunting challenges. It's a story of creativity, innovation, and a little bit of stubbornness. A city that continues to adapt and thrive against all odds. So, if you're as fascinated by this floating water wonder as we are, hit the like button and subscribe to stay tuned for more stories from the world's most intriguing cities.